especially in this show. So thank you so much for speaking with me today. No, thanks for having me. Of course, I need to talk to someone about that part one ending. Um, I cried my eyes out, (laughs) but somehow I know it's just going to get even more heartbreaking with this storyline. So can you preview what's ahead in terms of what fans should expect if they A, read the book and B, have not read the book? Yeah, it was definitely a very... uh a challenging set of scenes to shoot. And, you know, obviously you do, there's no one whose lives have not been touched by cancer. We lost my aunt, my grandmother to cancer and lots of the crew members who I had gotten to know very well by this point in shooting opened up to me and shared their stories. And so it was very emotional to film these scenes and to be looking into the eyes of all of these people who had told me their experiences. Yeah. Can you tell me about what it was like to start that storyline? You kind of just touched on it, but especially after she had such a happy moment with her engagement. I feel like that just made it all the more devastating, but also all the more realistic because life, it's true to life, unfortunately. Absolutely. And that's one thing I loved about this show was like, it never shies away from those moments. And it's such a balance of like, you know, especially since you have it through all the decades of there's all of the light moments and all the heavy moments. And I feel like that's what you need to be able to have like the exhale so you can, have those heavier moments is to have the levity as well. And, um, and the engagement and the comedy in the eighties and all of the, uh, stuff in the seventies with Ali and Roan. And, um, yeah, definitely, you know, especially seeing as the entire time you're waiting to see what's going to happen with Tully and Kate, and are they going to be able to fix their bond? And at the end of the day, Kate can't forgive her until, this moment. And then I think everything just falls away and Tully's the first person that she thinks of and who she wants to see and who she wants comfort from. That accident and, and that fight, I mean, oh my gosh, what an explosion. And, you know, everyone was left on the edge of their seat with season one. And then you do such a great payoff in season two. What was that like finding out where you were going with the fight and then actually filming those moments where you on Kate's side, where you on Tully's side, were you in the middle, were you just like makeup? <laughs> I know. I know. I was, I was so curious of, you know, what, what was it going to be? And when I got the script and I read it, I loved it because I felt like it was so, it was the perfect thing because you really see both sides. You so see Kate's side and you so see Tully's side. And I think you can really relate to both of them in that moment. You understand that for Kate, she can't forgive her. It was Mara. Maybe if it had been her, it would be different, but it was her kid. And there were so many other options on the table of what Tully could have done in that moment. She could have called Kate. She could have called a cab. She could have not let Margo in the first place and all of these things. And for Tully, because there's all of that foundation laid in season one of what happened with Tully and with Pat, you understand 100% when she hears Margo's voice on the phone, why she just drops everything and goes. Final season. What are you going to take with you from the experience moving forward, either in your personal life or acting wise to your next projects? Oh, well, part of that... I feel like I'm gonna have to tell you when we talk after the back half of this season so that I don't. All right. So we're, we're <laughs> reuniting for the back there's half. Totally, there's the one piece of that answer that's on pause, but okay. um, you know, this job was such a unicorn experience for me because, you know, like to get to play a part where you loved the people and the character and the story um, is so rare, but I think, you know, moving forward, just looking for a part that, that, stretches you and continues to push you outside of your comfort zone. Like there was never two days of filming that were the same. It was always like, here's my comfort zone. And then I'm going like way over here, whether it was like singing, which is terrifying for me, um, more than running around in my underwear. Singing is a much scarier thing just because like it's everything that's hard. And then they're singing because I was kicked out of the choir in grade five and those things, they leave a mark. So I, you know, first day um, the first day, first day of uh, shooting this season was the singing. And so <laughs> my nieces and my children know every word to Jim Croce's I got a name because I was practicing in the kitchen. I was practicing driving. One thing I just love about this show is I cover so many, but there is something so special about showing a female friendship, the complexity, the ups and downs, everything good about it. You know, what was the most rewarding part of bringing that to life for you personally? I mean, it's one thing to bring a romantic relationship to life, but I feel like just this sort of relationship is so much, so rich, so rewarding, and so easy to relate to for women watching. I think 
that's it. And I think it's not one that we see very often. It was one of the, like it was the main part that drew me to the show and to the script. And what I loved about the book was this complex, really real feeling friendship. You know, it's not the glossy, you know, perfect version of it. It's a, it's hard and it's great and it's all of the things. And um, I do feel like it's really a friendship that people can relate to. And I think that, you know, when it aired, it kind of came at a time when everyone, because of everything that was happening in the world, was like yes. reaching for the people that they loved. Yeah. They couldn't have come at a better time, honestly. I mean, I got to watch it with my mom and my grandma because they read the book in book club. So they were ecstatic. <laughs> you guys were done. awesome. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it really was amazing. Did you get to take anything from set after wrapping? I did. I um I'm quite a fan of the 80s, 80s clothes, 80s hair, 80s music, all of it. I have a uh like a dress up drawer for my kids. It's a bunch of stuff I've saved from the 80s. So I brought oh you know, acid wash jean jacket and some third, like things to the wardrobe fitting. Um, so I got some pretty sweet eighties clothes. That's awesome. That's a pretty great wardrobe, a departing yeah. gift. <laughs> Can't get better than that. And we also got such great scenes and a great storyline throughout the part one with you and Johnny. I mean, what a rich relationship and so much history, obviously. What was that like to sort of portray this, you know, new section of their relationship? I was so great. It was so fun to get to see, you know, them fall in love through the eighties and, and, you know, her, just Kate really kind of coming into her own and kind of, you know, going from somebody who was not so comfortable in her own skin and kind of shy and very nervous around Johnny to becoming so sure of herself and just seeing them really meant to be together. And then there was such fun episodes in the eighties where, you know, accidentally Kate gives them both ecstasy <laughs> And, uh, and then, you know, we get to see, I love that we get to see how complicated it got when like, you could see they're clearly perfect for each other. And then there's this one part that they don't agree on. And then that's it. Um, and then you, I love that we got to get into the nineties when they had little Mara. Um, it was, uh, it was really, and you kind of get to understand Kate trying to balance her, her life and a kid and being a stay at home mom. And then really, going from like the whole journey of being such a pleaser to really coming into her own and realizing what she wants and that she can go for it. I want to bounce off what you just said, because I think one of the reasons that this show has sucked so many people in and just has so many people invested in the characters is it shows them at such different points in their lives from obviously the friendship being formed when they were teenagers and now growing into adults and just your your character individually, you've got such a fully fleshed character. What do you think that adds to it? And what has that meant to you as an actress to bring so much to the character rather than just sticking to, oh, they're an adult from this age to this age. We're portraying this. That's it. Yeah, it was such a gift. I mean, such a unique experience. I've never gotten to play someone from 20 to someone in their 40s. And so such a fun challenge, just initially trying to figure out, okay, well, how do you make that person feel like the same person, but also you are at a completely different stage in their life. And so like physically, how do you move? And you had much more of a bounce in your step, but, and, but also emotionally, you know, just going from being like much more uh, awkward and uncomfortable to super sure of yourself. And, and then I thought, obviously, Allie and Roan, Ali Scobie and Roan Curtis, who played young Tully and young Kate were just spectacular. And I remember being at the table read. It was the first time I'd met them and my jaw was on the floor. Like I'm looking at Ali and Katie and they physically resemble each other so much. And then their mannerisms. And then Roan is sitting beside me and I just thought she was breathtaking. She's so talented. And, and it was so neat to kind of get to share a character with someone, which was something I hadn't done before. Um, and we have so much in common, so many weird things about our own lives and the way we move through the world that just was kind of a gift that just happened. Sarah, can't wait for everyone else to see part one. I can't wait to see part two and slap my eyes out and hopefully speak with you again soon about it. I can't wait. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. I want to say I'm a huge fan of both of you. You have just done such amazing work on this series. Thank, Thank you so much. much. That's so nice of you to say. Of course. And so I binged 
this part one in a weekend. Amazing. I'm already on the edge of my seat waiting for more, but I have to talk about that ending with someone. So I'm glad I'm talking about it with both of you. Oh you man. Know, right? Okay. I'm yeah. glad I'm not the only for one. Sure. So, oh yeah, I was sobbing on my couch. <laughs> yeah. Pretty devastating. But the thing is, I know it's about to get so much more heartbreaking with part two. So can you both preview what's ahead in terms of what fans should expect? A, if they've read the book and know sort of what path we're going on, and then B, if they have not read the book. Oh God. Okay. This is tough because we can't spoil, we can't spoil anything, but, um, (laughs) but I would say, um, well, for season two, part one, I think you can, I think you can expect more like digging deeper, basically just, just kind of um, experiencing these two characters and their friendship in more depth. Um, and obviously, um, as we know, there's a big rift. And so experiencing that, because I think that that's like, you know, one of the most devastating things that can yeah. happen to a person is the loss of kind of a soulmate in that sense, a platonic soulmate. Um, and then for part two, man, I would say if if season two, part one is is the second floor in terms of like, like how emotionally, um, you know, deep we're going, um, we're going to like, we're going to the penthouse in terms of like, I'm, we're going to like, we're going to level a hundred in terms of, um, depth and, um, and humor though as well. And I think that that's one of the most beautiful things about this show is that, is that there's such a beautiful, um, humor to it that, that really, um, complements um the depths to which we go I don't think I can add anything else that was really well said I agree I think you just have to to wait and see till it comes out but to people who haven't read the book I would say read the book Um, yes because I think it makes watching the show that much better absolutely I think yeah read the book for sure yeah and so this is the final season, which broke my heart, but it's what a, what a season, what a performance to go out with. And curious for both of you, is there anything you really took with this experience personally that you're going to sort of carry with you in the rest of your lives? I think everything. I feel like there was like so much that happened this season and also so much growth between us as well as our characters and so many experiences that both me and Ron went through together that I'll carry with me forever. I think she's taught me a lot about everything like just taught I think I was saying um earlier we are such different people both our characters and in real life um we're very very different but we're also so so close and being able to talk to somebody every day at work and not at work about just the way they think and and the way their mind works and um their opinion on things I think I will one of the main takeaways for me um this season in particular but just in life is is everything that Rona has taught me and talking to Rona and exploring what she thinks about life. She's a very smart lady. Uh, thank you. <laughs> You're kind. Um, yeah, I mean, likewise, I think that like that's, uh, I mean, I'm taking so much professionally, personally, but I would say the biggest takeaway is, is I'm taking my best friend with me. Um, and that's like, yeah, that's been the greatest gift. And like, honestly, everyone on this show is just so incredible. We're all so tight. Um, and yeah, I think, I think, I think we're taking an, a bunch of incredible, like interpersonal experiences as well as, as well as just an amazing kind of dream, like professional experience, um, away from all of this. And I think that it's really nice that we got as much time with each other as we did. And yeah, I, I just feel so lucky to have been metaphorically and quite literally holding Ali's hand this entire time. <laughs> yes. I love the shows that portray strong female friendships and strong females. Mm -hmm. I just think that's so crucial. I love a good relationship, but what better relationship, right? Than a, than a female friendship. This show uh, portrays the ups and downs, the complexities. And I love that it goes back and forth between obviously you two and then the older versions, truly getting a full circle for the, for these characters. What is your take on that? Why do you think that's so important to show where we were and how we've come this journey and what has been your favorite part of that, especially you two playing them at such a crucial age? I think I think there's really something to be said for knowing somebody from the time that you were 
very young. I think that, and I, and I think that it, it almost mirrors the, the relationship because you kind of need to know where they started to understand where they are. And I think that that's what Maggie and Daba and Becky and everyone in the writer's room did so beautifully um, is, is find ways, finding ways to show what's going, how, what's going on in the eighties or nineties and what's going on in the two thousands is impacted by what happened in every decade before. And I think that that's what, and that's what knowing like being friends with lifelong friends with somebody is it's it's never having to explain yourself kind of it's 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 I don't need to explain my backstory to you because you already know so I can say like someone's name and they're like oh yeah I know everything that that and and I think that you know you can make these beautiful very strong friendships later on in life but but having somebody who when you mention your parents they know all the history there when you mention your siblings they know all the history there and so it's just this very innate knowing of each other. And I think that uh, that these two characters have, and I think that the series very accurately mirrors that dynamic in its storytelling. Yeah, I agree. I think it's rare that we have a show that shows to um, a friend relationship as opposed to a romantic relationship. And I think people want to see strong women, two strong women empowering each other and motivating each other and, and working towards a common goal with each other and uplifting each other. Like truly, I think what I love the most about our show is that it is just two badass, powerful, strong women going through life and helping each other out. And then that is the main focus of the show. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, relationships are just like real, like romantic relationships, platonic relationships can get messy and they can get hard and tough and, and you can come, through obstacles and, and have the best times of your life. And I think it's rare that we show all sides of that and just focus on a friendships side of the whole journey of what it truly is to have a best friend. Oh, you both have some great storylines. So I'm curious for both of you, what has been the most challenging yet rewarding storyline for your individual characters? I think, I feel like this season we delve even further into like Kate's awkward stage. Um, <laughs> Like, I feel like, I feel like Kate almost regresses a little bit in terms of her awkwardness, um, which I I feel like we all do. I mean, 15, like 14, 15 are like, were peak awkward stage for me. I feel like I thought that my awkward stage was 13, 14, and then I hit 15, 16. Um, And so I, I feel like that's, that was not tough, but a fun challenge because I'm 26 or I'm almost 26. And so, um, and so I'd like to think that I've, left my awkward stage long behind me but almost delving deeper into that like with the haircuts and the clothes and 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 the, and the boys and the and the friend dynamics and really getting into how deeply uncomfortable being a teenager particularly of that age is was so much fun for me and I mean and I yeah I love comedy and I love um the comedic aspects of that but also the tenderness of that and so that was like I think that was my favorite part of the storyline is just is just falling uh, like as Kate falling on my face again and again and again, but getting back up with with kindness and strength and earnestness and also having those moments where she finds her strength, because there are definitely those moments this season where she's like where where you can see that glimmer of where she ends up um, when Sarah is playing Kate Um, a lot more fortitude and self-assurance. And um, yeah, that was my favorite part. That was my favorite part of my storyline. Uh, okay I think I think the hardest is is the sexual assault stuff but I also think it's the most rewarding especially because we see Tully struggling so much and having a relief and a little bit of of a peak of of like I mean I don't spoil anything but um if you spoil it's okay because we're okay so it's okay 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 of being able to to confront Pat once again and having having that moment of finally being able to say what he did to her and finally being able to confront him about what he knows he did to her and also being able to help another woman in the same situation um, who maybe would possibly have an encounter, the same, the same encounter. So I think it's the most rewarding because this is unfortunately such a common thing that a lot of women go through and I love that we don't shy away from it. Um, and I love that we show how hard it can still be even years later, even if, whether it's Tully when she's 14, 15, 16, or Tully when she's 40. And um, 
I think that that is the most rewarding to be able to hopefully as earnestly as possible do justice to to that storyline and, and have it be more talked about on TV. Thank you both so much for your time. Huge congrats on this show. And I can't wait to see what both of you do next and cry my eyes out at part two, because let's be honest. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, totally. Thank, Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> of Thank course. You. Thank you guys. Like you talking about the things that you like too. So I invite you to the NOC. In full color, you see me. The hard not crying.